Hi friends, and welcome to All The Things TV with me, Tiffany Jo Baker, where our heart is to help you grip God's grace, use your gifts, and get your goals, even in your mess and mission. Join us now for this episode of season two of the podcast, where we talk about different areas that we may be on the struggle bus, so you can struggle less and succeed more and do all the things you've been called and created to do. Hello, y'all, and welcome back to All The Things TV with Tiffany Jo Baker. I'm excited because today we're going to talk about a struggle that we all have. And let me just start by saying, did you know that there is actually a Stress in America report? Never knew there was such a thing. But this last one has said that 8 out of 10 adults in America have been stressed out due to this current pandemic that we're in. So I think then like never before, we really need to learn how to take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're gonna be talking about, the struggle with self care today. So let me just say some of the things that people responded to in the Stress in America report that they reported. And let me see if any of these maybe apply to you. This is what they said that the stressors are calling. High levels of reported negative behavior, tension in their bodies, this one, y'all, snapping or getting angry quickly, unexpected mood swings, and yelling at loved ones. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't think of anybody better than my, one of my BFFs in real life for like almost 20 years is my (laughs) friend, Amanda (laughs) Runnell. Thank you, Amanda, for coming here today. Hey, Tiffany, how are you? Thank you for having me. 20 years. I know. (laughs) We were like three and so <laughs> when we first met definitely yes but y'all amanda is amazing and she has mm-hmm. been through a journey of healing and wholeness through dealing with multiple illnesses she now is the what i love how she puts this better for you food addict and nutrition geek behind the blog at unrefined junkie and she really goes at diet and less lifestyle from a fun functional healing perspective. So Amanda, we're going to dive in to the struggle with self care because I know we as women's we have we have so many different excuses and reasons why Mm -hmm. we can't. Mm -hmm. And so what would you start with by saying what are some of those clues that a person might need to recognize their need at all for self care? That is huge It is so huge. And you just kind of alluded to it actually, um, in your intro, those statistics, because Mm -hmm. they are crazy. And I'll add to that Mm -hmm. from the insurance side, like the cost of healthcare associated with all the stress is like over 3 billion annually. Oh, wow. Crazy. Yes. So some signs to look for, of course, that crankiness, right? Mm -hmm. If you snap at your kids one too many times this week, your spouse, God bless my husband. He is the bearer of that in my house. And if he is watching, baby, I love you. Thank you for putting up with me. Um, You know, brain fog. Oh my goodness. This is such a big deal. Our cognition can take such a hit when we just go, go, go and don't stop and unplug. Right. So maybe you're at a loss for words. Maybe that memory isn't firing quite like you're used to having it do good indication it's time to kind of stop and maybe take a time out. I think we all need a time out from time to time, right? Not just our kids, we do too. Um, Maybe you're getting sick more easily, right? Mm -hmm. That cold that's kind of held on for a couple of months, those allergies that have been here since like June, Mm -hmm. those are good indications that your immune system is kind of sending up some red flags because Mm -hmm. you've just been in stress mode for too long. And kind of along those lines too, your nails and your hair Mm -hmm. and your skin. And it's not just vanity when you think about that, right? When we are in fight or flight for a consistent period of time, our digestion takes a massive Hit, and that we can't absorb our minerals and our vitamins and the things that we need, right? So if your nails start flaking or peeling, if your hair starts breaking more easily, if your skin's kind of ugh, looking more like the Crypt mm-hmm. Keeper, right? Good indication that it's time <laughs> to just slow down and take a break. Those are so good. And I think one that I don't think of as much, but I know you've hit on it multiple times when I've talked to you, is that brain fog. Mm -hmm. I think that sometimes we can overlook that like, oh, words are just hard today. (laughs) I haven't had that extra cup of coffee today. I hear that one all the time. Yeah, the time, all the time. I think those are some really good um, indicators that we need to focus on our self-care. I even have two of my family members in the last few months have dealt with significant hair loss. 
mm -hmm. due to trauma and stress. Yes. And so our body will yell at us. If, mm -hmm. if the whispers, if we aren't hearing those whispers of needing to stop and take care of us, our body will start yelling at us. A hundred percent. Yes. And it's much harder to get it to be quiet when it's at that point than had you just handled it the first time around. I mean, mm. it's, it's no different from, you know, how the Lord speaks, right? Is that yeah. still, that's still a small voice. It's the same thing with your body it's going to speak too quietly at first. Mm, I love that. Okay. So the average busy mom, mm -hmm. like me, you, lots of us who are watching and listening, mm -hmm. um, often have heard that Self-care is like a luxury. It's just something that I don't have time for. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I wish I could go to the spa like you do. You know, you hear those comments yeah. that it's like, oh, that's, I'm so happy for you. You get to do that. But that's not something I can do. Yeah. What would you say to help, help busy women reframe the perspective on self-care? I love that. And I think, first of all, the, the important thing is to recognize that self-care is like this huge gamut of things that you can do to care for yourself. It's not just a day at the spa. As awesome as that would be, right? It's not just going and getting that massage. It's it's maintenance, right? Self-care at its most basic form is maintenance. I mean, we maintain our cars, our homes, our appliances. Why wouldn't we maintain ourselves, right? Yeah. And it's not it's not just for us, it's for everybody in our sphere. It's kind of like the oxygen mask, right? Mm -hmm. On the airplane, you put it on yourself before you can put it on others. Mm -hmm. You have to be maintained first. So I think that's the first thing, right? Just kind of, kind of recognize it's all of the things that we do. Um, for example, I keep a little humidifier at my desk because I'm a huge dork, right? <laughs> it's, it's the daily things mm -hmm. that we do, right? It's the healthy foods that we reach for. It's pausing whenever we need to. It's, it's um, you know, keeping things like this at your desk so you can mm -hmm. make sure that you're maintaining yourself throughout the day. And I think something that's important to recognize here, too, is it's not always obvious. It kind of goes back to our first point in talking about stress management, mm -hmm. right? The things that you do day to day to bring that stress level down. Did you know that like 80% of doctor's visits go back to mm -hmm. chronic stress? I mean, imagine all that money you'd save if you had just gotten that $40 massage. <laughs> yes, of, I love that. Yeah. Instead of going to the doctor, right? So it's the little things that you do day to day. So that's the first thing to recognize is you don't mm -hmm. have to make it this big to do. It can be as simple as walking to that refrigerator and picking up an apple instead of picking up mm -hmm. a slice of pizza, right? Little things like that are, are forms of self-care. I think also too, just kind of reframing it in terms of the fact that it's not woo-woo, right? Mm -hmm. I know there are some circles of the wellness space that have kind of made it something it's not, right? Mm -hmm. It really is scriptural. I mean, mm -hmm. it honestly is. These bodies were given to us by God, right? He died for these bodies. It's up mm -hmm. to us to take care of it and be good stewards. And in fact, there's a scripture that I want to read to you here because I think that it really speaks to this issue of self-care in terms of rest, right? Mm -hmm. So this is, let's see here. Okay, it's Hebrews. I don't know if you, if you have access to it, but it's Hebrews 4, 6, and 7. So God's rest is there for people to enter. Mm -hmm. But those who first heard this good news failed to enter because they disobeyed God. So mm -hmm. God set another time for entering his rest, and that time is today. God mm -hmm. announced this through David much later in the words already quoted today. When you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. So if you're having a hard time with self care, right? If you feel like it's selfish or if you mm -hmm. feel like, you know, I can't afford this or I can't do that, bring it back to center. Think about what you're doing day in and day out to care for yourself. And remember there is a scriptural foundation. Mm -hmm. God values rest. He rested himself. We mm -hmm. need to be good stewards and rest as well. And there are three keys in that scripture that I just read mm -hmm. that I think really um, lend to this, right? And that first thing is to hear his voice, of course. The second thing is to let your heart be open to him. And the last one is obedience, right? So good. I think that kind of takes away a lot of those excuses that we have or a lot of those barriers mm -hmm. that it's yeah. not selfish. It's not woo woo. It's vital. And it's how yeah. we were made, how God made us to need that. And like you said, it's for not just for us, but for the loved ones that are around us day to day. Yeah. It's our happy time. It is. Absolutely. <laughs> it's our, and it's our and, nice time. <laughs> and they're going to be happier for it too. I promise. <laughs> absolutely. 
So how do we start reprioritizing ourselves? You know, a lot of us are, maybe we're those helpers, we're those doers, we're those action takers. And we think if we don't get things done, nothing's going to get done. So how do we reprioritize ourselves? Oh, listen, you know me. That's my calling card. I think that's both of our calling cards, right? We can just get so caught up in the do, 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 because let's face it, and the roles that we carry as moms, as wives, as employees, you know, whatever our role happens to be, there's always an element of do. But then as natural caregivers, we tend to add more do to our do, right? Than we need to do. So I think the first thing is we have to learn to delegate. I mean, there are people that are going to catch that ball if you can't catch it. There is always a ram in the thicket, right? Mm -hmm. So learn to rely on that. Learn to delegate where you can. And you know what? Divide and conquer, whether it's in your workspace or in your home. I mean, listen, if you have a spouse, if you have a kids, put them to work. (laughs) Yeah, they are going to learn some great life skills in the process of helping you out. So definitely develop, delegate divide and conquer and then you know learn to say no for me that was a big big deal i think i think we can kind of tend to um not only take on more than we are supposed to Mm -hmm. but to in to a a lesser degree maybe even kind of become a martyr in that process Mm -hmm. right like i Mm -hmm. have to i have to i have to but learning to say no not only unplugs you and makes room for the things that god is actually calling you to do right besides that extra report or whatever it is that you're working on it gives somebody else an opportunity to shine, right? So yes. when you take a step back, it's going to let somebody else step into maybe the gifts and the callings that they are called to also. So there again, it's not selfish in saying no. Mm-hmm. You're probably helping somebody else step into their destiny at the same time. Those are so good and, and just really practical on how we don't have to be the end all be all. Yes. We don't have to be that <laughs> bottleneck. You know, that's not how we were made. We weren't made to carry yeah. all of that weight. And I think if I would add a fourth one would be just lower our expectations. Yeah, that's so good. Just that we would not, not everything has to be done today. Yeah. Not everything has to be done at 110% level. Yeah. And not everything has to be done. So learning to let go and not pick it back up is so important as well. Yeah. One of the doctors that I work with, he's got a great saying here, and he, he's a believer, which I just, I love working for him, but he says, progress, not perfection, Yes, right? Perfection is not our jam. That's God's jam. So let's just keep moving forward. Yeah. Amen. Well, what do you, what would you say there? I know some people are be like, well, I do that. I do that. I do that. Yeah. But they don't ever feel rested or refreshed yeah. or refueled. Yeah. What, would, what are some indicators that maybe what we're doing for self-care is not being super effective? Well, I think, first of all, kind of going back to those those physiological signs, right? Our, mm. our attitude and how we're speaking, mm. the words that are coming across. But I would say to listen to your self-care or I'm sorry, to your self-talk. Mm-hmm. And this is something actually, listen, I had to work through this morning, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm, I'm getting ready for my day. Like I'm at my little mirror, which is kind of falling apart already anyway. And like every mascara, eyeliner, you know, brow gel crisis that could happen, all happened. <laughs> you know, followed yeah. by a dog who is sick, you know, mm-hmm. just all these little things. And all of a sudden, you know, my, my self-talk starts going towards doubt, right? Mm-hmm. Self-doubt, doubt that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, which leads to yeah. doubting God. It leads to doubting the people around you, right? So you have to kind of reframe that self-talk to be one that's life giving, right? So I Mm -hmm. think listening to your self talk, if you find yourself constantly on the side of this isn't going to work, or, you know, I'm not made for this, or this, this and this keeps happening, why does it keep happening to me? Mm -hmm. If you're in a pattern like that, definitely an indication that it's time to kind to kind of um, reset some things. Um, And you know, I always always tell my clients, um, I know that you you're doing all the things you're doing a you're doing B you're doing C but if nothing else right if you don't feel like you have more time in your day which first of all self-care shouldn't be a, check, a checklist item right it shouldn't be on your to-do list because again we're stewards mm-hmm. we're maintaining these bodies it should be a priority not a to-do list item um, but I digress so I always tell them find two 15s right mm-hmm. so these are two sets of 15 minutes in your day and that first 15 minutes, I want to be geared towards filling your cup up, right? Whatever brings your soul to life. For me, that's my devotional time. If you're an artist, that might be picking up your paintbrush, 
for 15 minutes strategically in your day. Don't leave it as an afterthought. Carve out 15 minutes to go and do that, right? If you're an author, maybe it's finally sitting down and getting that outline written for the book that you want to write, right? 10 to 15 minutes a day on that. Then that second 15 is going to be spent outside, right? Going outside, getting your feet in the grass, getting the sunshine, getting the fresh air. That has been shown. That one thing has mm. been shown to bring down your cortisol levels like mm. almost nothing else can. It's actually on the same level as um, as medical intervention, right, in terms wow. of prescriptions. Mm -hmm. So one 15 minute a day, go outside and, and do that. It'll help reset your mind. It'll help get your rhythms back in order hormonally, start mm. bringing that cortisol down, which ultimately, you know, impacts your health overall. So 215 today. Great. I love that. So, so good and practical. Um, well, I know people after hearing this, they're going to want more. They're going to mm -hmm. want to see what else that you have to offer. So where can people find you? So I am over at unrefinedjunkie.com. So that's my website. And then, of course, on Instagram, it's just Unrefined Junkie. Also on Facebook, Unrefined Junkie. Wonderful. Well, y'all, I hope this really spoke to your heart, your soul, and your self-care that you were designed to maintain and steward the body that God has given you. Mm -hmm. And your family needs it. You need it your faith needs it, and your community needs it. Well, Amanda, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you. This was so fun. Y'all, we look forward to seeing you next time. And thank you for being here with us today at All The Things TV with Tiffany Jo Baker. Well, friends, thank you for joining us today on All The Things TV video podcast. If you enjoyed our time together and are taking away a nugget that has inspired your soul and success, would you share this episode with a loved one who could use it too? And if you haven't already, take a moment to rate and review the podcast and help me spread soul care and dream care. Until next time, I'm Tiffany Jo Baker, a three-time surrogate and strategizer who loves to help you birth your God-given dreams. Now go do all the things you've been called and created to do with the grace and gifts God has given you.